In 1982, John Carpenter released The Thing onto an unsuspecting world. Here's what Roger Ebert had to say on it. The story is totally implausible and the movie just basically is an excuse for this very gruesome and repellent creature to gross us out. It is okay. the most nauseating thing I've ever seen on a movie screen, I think. That's quite a statement. I Gene Siskel's reaction says it all. What say you, Kurt Russell? Yeah, fuck you too! Understandable. Over 40 years later, The Thing is now regarded as a bona fide classic, and one of Carpenter's best. So, was Ebert wrong? Well, yes. And no. Ebert wasn't just a film critic, he was THE film critic. A household name across America, and along with Siskel, one you could trust to offer up some sound, unpretentious advice for your weekly viewing. But he was, first and foremost, another member of the theatre audience, like you or me. And that was the angle from which he always approached his criticism. Make no mistake, Ebert was an educated man. College aside, his real education came from watching more movies than you or I could ever probably dream of seeing. And he had the Pulitzer to show for it. How could he have missed the mark so badly? The short answer is, the film just didn't work for him. And he wasn't the only one either. Though it had its fans, the majority of critics didn't get it. Even the cast reportedly walked out of the test screening, not entirely sold in what they had just seen. And that's okay, for the reason of these three simple words. Film is subjective. We all experience things differently. As people, we are the sum of every interaction, influence, and encounter that we've ever had. And from the moment we're born, our tastes begin to develop. The beauty of it is that they never really stop developing. The first time I saw Blade Runner, I fell asleep. When I saw it again a year later, I fell in love with it. What didn't work for me the first time had clicked into place on that second watch. Long after their words are printed, film critics are still privy to this as well. Just ask Jim Carrey. Before Ace came out, uh, I was in Chicago doing a live gig. Uh, my manager sat me down at a restaurant in Chicago, and they said, we got kind of bad news. A Siskel and Ebert killed you. They had the, uh, the words on a page, and I just looked, and it said, the worst movie ever made, <laughs> the worst actor ever, ma ever made. By the time I had done Truman Show, Siskel and Ebert did an entire episode just about me <laughs> and called it Jim Carrey Clown with Class. Like, mm. they just said we were wrong. And I've never seen a critic say that. Mm. Both of them said we were wrong. We didn't know what we were seeing. Films and all the elements within them are always ripe for reevaluation. It's how overlooked ones finally find glory, and oddities become cult classics. That's not to say it will always work out in favor of your opinion, though. Let's take a little trip back to 2009. My friend and I took a trip to our local multiplex to see The Spirit, Frank Miller's Sin City-esque adaptation of Will Eisner's pulpy comic book. Our 16-year-old selves were hyped. This hype increased when we found out that we had bought the only two tickets for the biggest screen. The film rolled on, we had a blast, and we left assured that we had seen a great bit of cinema. Fair to say that none of these critics were 16-year-old boys. Years later, I can understand what they were saying and why they didn't like it. Their points are valid because they come from their own personal opinions, experiences, and film-watching educations. And so are mine for what that particular film achieved for me at that place and time. And while re-evaluation of the spirit seems highly unlikely, I still find myself a fan of the film. While others found it to be shallow and, for lack of a better word, dumb, I read those attributes as being intentional, and that works for me. It would be all too easy for me to write it off as a guilty pleasure. But let's get something straight here. Though the cinema may be your church, film is not a religion. So let go of the guilt. If you like something, own it. One of Ebert's best qualities was his passion for the films he talked about. His great movie collections are a treasure trove of cinematic appreciation from one of film's greatest proponents. We know his thoughts on the thing. But Ebert would also go against the grain to champion a film. He loved The Phantom Menace. This movie is a remarkable achievement, a marriage of imagination and special effects, and my thumb is up with a lot of admiration. Speed 2, Cruise Control. It isn't a great action movie, but it's a very competent one, and it gets the job done. I liked it. 
even the happening. What? No! And that's okay, because he understood what those films were achieving for him. Do most film critics know better? Undoubtedly. But that doesn't mean you can't like something they don't. We're all members of the audience, after all. And on that note, I'll leave you with a parting thought from Ebert himself. It's been said that literature and drama and poetry hold up a mirror to humanity. The movies certainly do. And when we sit in a theater and look at the movies, uh, it's like being able to eavesdrop on people's dreams. A very successful movie may be good, it may be bad, but it is certainly telling you something about the people who have gone to see it, that that's what they fear or what they hope for or what they care about. So to look at the movies is to know, in a way, what's going on around you in the world, to feel it.